Hey, Gamma. They're coming for you. <laughs> this is what you want to donate for. Look at these sets. Look at them all. The God Sparse himself came to me. And he said, Noob, I'm going to crash your internet on one of the most important nights of your life. But know this, I will bless you with my army of clones, and you will use every single move set possible to take Gamma, shove him under a rock, then shove him under a bigger rock, run him over with a monster truck, and drop a nuke on him. Only then shove his body into a microwave. Turn it onto high, then throw the microwave off a boat into a pool of sharks, eaten by larger sharks, to only be then eaten by Moby Dick, and then Moby Dick exploded by the A-bomb, into space, where Marvin the Martian shall incinerate any remnants of your existence. And only then will I win one of the 1,000 games we have to do in this tournament. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh. Oh, look. Quick preview. Got him. <laughs> Alright, well. Oxen went to go get ramen, but luckily her co-coach is still here, so we can keep going. We don't have to wait for her. Not in this season. Call my bluff, boys. <laughs> oh no, he saw two of my 31 god sparses. Help me. <laughs> oh, in times like this, you can only do one thing. Literally try and have as much fun as possible through all of the pain. Thank you very much for your patience tonight, guys. Get out of here. Well, okay, let's talk a little bit more about... This is the reign of, of Pichu Warriors right now. This is their theme song. So, the thing that we have to see the Scott Power Sky Sharks do in order to actually see success here is I think really have to try and figure out a way to get around that Double Scarf, which we can only assume is Double Scarf from that Tyrantrum. On top of that, they have to get around the priority that Queenly Majesty Serena prevents. So, I think if they can find more firepower to break through... I don't know what else is on their team that could actually do it. For Alligator might be a good wall breaker because that's the crunch for the Slowking, but the Slowking didn't show up. It could have some value. It is Dragon Dance. It could do some stuff, but I don't think it'll last long enough around any of the walls because Chestnut could also come out, and that becomes a problem. So I think Mitch might have just got him in a, into a corner, but there's always a chance for them to try and set it up. <sighs> Either way, we are getting into game number two. Not with this music, sadly. I like Yorm, but it's this music instead. What? That's not the game. Well, this music can get you guys hyped. We are getting into game number two. Sock Power Sky Sharks down. Oh, one. But it doesn't mean they are out. We do see that for Alligator making its way in here. We do see the Slow King coming back in. So, the Chestnut is gone. For Alligator's feeling a little bit better. That Crunch is going to do a ton of damage. Let's see if they can actually try and come back in here and even up the series. Or the Pichu Warrior is going to stick a nail in this collective coffin. Find out in the Pro Pokeball Season 4 Finals. It will be the Heatran versus the Weavile lead. Weavile feeling okay, but you don't want to go for a knockoff when a Lava Plume could literally just destroy your entire day. I honestly wish I could cook and play Pokemon at the same time, too. That's just a skill I'm going to have to learn more as a broadcaster. I, you know what? If I could streaming and cook as a broadcaster... Ooh, 
be amazing, wouldn't it? No more cooking mama with noob, it'll get me in trouble. And I don't have enough internet strength to actually do it. But nonetheless, we're not talking about my cooking skills and how lacking they are. We're talking about this match. Let's take a look at the teams. I actually like what the Sky Sharks have brought this time. It feels like they have a little bit more pressure with the setup. If they can get that for Alligator in at a good time, it can do a fair amount of damage to Mitch. It can kill four of the six Pokemon with its stab. Or not with its stab, but with Sheer Force, Crunch, and Liquidation. Lava Plume will come through onto the Diancie. A burn on this wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but Diancie can feel safe going for the Mega here. Threaten with Earth Power. It'll most likely have to be that Slow King coming in to take the hit, or even the um, the Mew can do it, but Mew can only really go for Soft Boiled or Seismic Toss. So... Slow King does put offensive pressure back down on it, with the likes of... Oh! I never saw, slow I never saw Stealth Rock come out of this thing. Interesting. Okay, then. But... Uh, that Stealth Rock set up against Mitch. That is super curious. Guess they got away with it. Look at that. Skull Bull come through and just kill them off. Diamond Storm not doing anything. Maybe a bit of an overprediction there. But Diancie is gone. Now, Diancie looking like it's gonna try and get some things done, but I don't think it's going to. Weavile can come in, threaten with the knockoff, but I think the Slow King has proved more than enough that it could do a good amount here. So it almost feels like one of those situations where, again, you gotta bring this thing in, you gotta switch. This is like what Ivan had to deal with. Ooh, that crit's gonna do a lot of damage. Not that it mattered. The crit without the crit would have done about 57%, and then another hit would be able to kill it off from there. We do know this is double priority. Weavile, there is no low kick. But either way, see what's going on here. Serena is gonna come in. This is Scarfed. It does threaten the entire team. Caldeo doesn't even want to take the Power Whip. I'm assuming Power Whip can come out here because Power Whip should kill the Weavile. We've always not that bulky, and do you really want to risk that damage, Calc? I don't think there's any bulk on this Weave all to be able to take that hit. Serena does have a respectable attack stat. Hey, Rhea Freya with the raid. Thank you much for the raid. Welcome to the Pro Pokeball Season 4 Finals. Between Stock Power Sky Sharks and the Pichu Warriors. Pichu Warriors on the far side currently up 1-0. to They are looking to take the Season 4 Championship right here, right now, with my baked potato literally frying itself and trying to prevent it. But we will do a champion tonight. U-turn will come out from the Serena on the Thunderous T-Switch. Probably a Mew Switch here or a Deblade. Something to be able to take the hit, which... I think it might be... Okay, oh, it's actually the Slow King. Is he trying to bait something here? <laughs> we will do a champion today. We will do it. <laughs> this should be interesting. Okay, so maybe he's trying to bait out the Thunderbolt so he can go into Mew, but I don't know if he'd actually try and do that. What does he know? Do you know he could take a hit go for Future Sight? If he goes for Future Sight on being able to take that barring a crit. Could also be a misclick. <laughs> I don't know. I'm very curious to see what he's trying to plan out. The Weavile actually does switch. And he did end up going for Ice Beam. Okay, so he knew that he could take a hit, wanted to pressure with Ice Beam, then get the Regenerator boost on a couple of things. Knowing that Thunder's T would be the only thing to be able to kill it off. Or the Weavile. But I don't know. That's very... I mean, we're assuming this... this... Slow King has Assault Vest. So, probably knows he can take it very well. That's kind of weird. Sharpedo is going to come in now on the knockoff, which means it won't be taking as much damage as you expect. It's still a lot of damage, but it's a Sharpedo, so taking less than 50% is going to be the best thing for him. But Sharpedo can threaten here. It can go for the priority. It, there is no, no Fake Out plus Ice Shard combination. It's only Ice Shard, which means a free speed boost is coming through. Actually, he might go for the Protect just to guarantee it, and if he gets the plus two, he'll outspeed that Keldeo, but he's not able to kill it yet, so that speed does not matter. He's not going to get enough. I don't think he wants to sack the Sharpedo off that hard. How you doing, Redshirt? Good to see you, man. He does actually just end up going for the Ice Fang. Maybe thinking the Thunderous T would come in, but Thunderous T, the problem is that would hurt her chances of being able to hurt it anyway, so probably the best bet for her to switch in is the Feraligator to tank the hit, but tanking all the hits does mean... Crunch will do a lot here. He's actually going all in with this. How much can he do? Ooh, he gets a bunch down. Oh! <laughs> As he knows, believe it or not, Liquidation would have killed the Sharp Keto, but predicts the switch and is now going to get burned for it. As now there's just a bunch of damage that the Pichu Warriors can send through. The attack boost does not matter on this Keldeo. 
He knows he can just go for as much damage as possible at this plus one speed. He does outspeed the KLDO, so he can go for one more damaging move in the form of Earthquake. Get a lot of damage down. He's done very well here. He's, I think he actually outplayed the Sky Sharks. And basically saying, I'm a shark. I'm better than you because I still stay in the sea and I'm not flying. I'm wasting all my time destroying you. So as a result, he's going to get a fair amount of value out of this. He's actually going to keep it as well because he has the defog, meaning he could come back in and sweep with it. Scald on Slowking. Slowking does not care. Assault Vest can be able to take this no problem. Even Secret Sword is resisted. So he's going to try and get that Mew in later. He has to get it in on the Gligar. But with that Feraligator move, with a move on Feraligator, Liquidation would have done enough with Stab and Shear Force. The, sh the Shear Force Crunch was not enough to kill it off. But I expect that maybe they thought the Mew would try and come in and get the burn on it. Or stuff like that. So it does end up burning them instead. In the end, and oh, 1% get the burn for BM. It doesn't happen. So you can get one more attack off before taken out. But actually not taken out because Shear Force will allow the Life Orb to not hurt as much. So I don't think Pichu Warriors want to risk losing their Slow King. It's too important. The Dublade is actually sent in. Crunch comes through, does absolutely nothing. And Shadow Sneak will basically force this thing dead. I am not ignoring you, uh, Red Shirt. I think I said hello as well. <laughs> Pretty sure I did. Thank you for the edit, Marie. Appreciate that. Hey, Fedora. Good to see you, man. Now that you all say it, I'm watching the chat. I do pay attention. I just try and stay in as much character as I possibly can. Plus, I only have one headbutt in because the other ear... Headbutt? The, the other earbud shocks me. So I can't even listen through more than just my right ear. This is a great night. You should eat up some swords, Ox, because at this point, you're just getting cut by this thing. Actually, we see a switch here. So still seeing the valley, because the Heatran is down, there are no stealth rocks. So Feraligator can still get the opportunity to take on that Slow King. It's a good switch by the Soft Power Sky Sharks. Knockoff does come through. Mew doesn't care. It's not taking a lot of damage. Leftovers are one thing, but we know that this Mew can take a lot of hits and go for soft build when it needs to. So we're probably going to see just a defog come through here from the Gligar. Rocks were a cool play. I don't know if staying in with, uh, or trying to do anything with that Diancie was as well, though, because it's just a lot of damage could have done. Had a fair amount of speed, but honestly, actually, if you look at the side of the Pichu Warriors, Diancie's not getting that much value. So, is an unfortunate loss, but it also didn't get anything done in the end because Mew is still free to defog these, and we're back to normal, except with this situation here. So, we see that. We're probably going to see a size of toss. Yep, no point in healing because we know it does over half. Softball just delays the inevitable, especially without leftovers. So getting as much damage down as Thunderous T as possible to get it down, plus the life orb, means less uses for Ox to spam face. And here it comes, Serena. We've seen this play before. Scarf Serena saying hello. Now, only one Scarf for this time on the side of the Pichu Warriors. Starting to get a bit of leg. No big deal. That's just my stream for some reason. Thank you very much for the bits, Redshirt. Appreciate that, man. Knockoff will actually get rid of the Choice Scarf on this. So well played by Pichu Warriors to actually get rid of that. Knowing that this thing would outspeed his Scarfer. Knocks out the Scarfer says, now I am the fastest, most pretty. I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Is that a shirt? Is that his face? Is that its hand? It's a really big pink hand. We're going to say this thing is a really big pink hand. I don't know. It just reminds me of literally Marilyn Monroe kicking your ass. It's the Pokemon Marilyn Monroe. Minus the skirt blow because all the skirt is just stapled to her stomach. Either way, Skull's going to come through on the Slow King. Does get the burn again. We said the same thing about the Sarasota Sweet Coons. We don't care. <laughs> this Slow King is the MVP right now. I'm saying it right now. This has been so difficult for so many teams to get through. Similar to the Tangrowth on W. Wellington. This is just getting insane. It, there's nothing to kill it because he has so many defensive Pokemon. Who gave Mitch Mew? Pro tip from Pro Pokenoob. Ban Mew. Mew is ridiculous. Ban it! I may or may not have ripped out a Crown Royal. Anyways. Back to the game. The Weavile is going to come in. It's okay. Slow King can just go for the Skull. Try and get as much value. Doesn't get the burn, but this Weavile has two attacks left into it. We see the Mew coming in. Doesn't matter. The Mew's done its job. It's gotten rid of the rocks, which means residual damage from switching in is not going to matter. Serena comes back in, we're out speeding, Queenly Majesty prevents the, the Ice Shard. Mitch has the Sky Sharks tied up at this point. There's nothing they can do. We 
You can do it, computer. You can do this. I know what it is. I know what it is. No, it's on my side. The HP electric or grass comes through as the Scald is going to be fired off on the Keldeo, but the Keldeo can't break through this. Got Regenerator, tons of Pokemon to switch into attacks afterwards. It looks bad. It looks like there's a lot of Pokemon left, but there are a lot of them are just beat up. This is basically what a war zone looks like after, you know, four or five years of war. It's just getting worse and worse. As the Dublade is going to come in, the HP grass, ice, electric, not ice, grass or electric, doesn't matter. It's not getting anything done against this Dublade, but luckily... The Scarf was knocked off, but there is Shadow Sneak coming through from the Dublade, so this Keldeo is basically going to have to switch out of here. Gligar is going to come in, take the hit. It's in the best interest. You don't have to lose Keldeo, especially since you have a defensive answer to go through with this. I'm going to close Discord. That should help. Okay. Please help. You can do it. This is the finals. This is game number two, Fedora. Source Dance does actually come through on the Gligar going for Earthquake, though, so. <coughs> Excuse me. No value is going to be gotten here. Shadow Sneak does next to nothing. Sky Shark's getting advantage here, taking out the Dublade. So looking bad, but. Sharpedo does have Ice Fang, which means it can take this thing down. It's in a range where it will die. It is fairly fast. We've also taken away the Scarf. So Mega Sharpedo, even without a speed boost. Just proving how fast it can be. Not living the Ice Fang taken down. What do they have left? Weavile does come in. Does have the priority. I wonder if there's going to be a prediction here. Maybe Mitch actually ends up going into Slowking. Predicting not a priority move. The priority move is in the best interest. But Slowking can also take the last hit. Which means that it'll kill itself off from Life Orb. And then Sharpedo is still safe to finish it from there. Eviolite Dublade is the only thing Nick Defile. Actually, yes, you are correct. My bad. He did go for Swords Dance. So maybe that wasn't, um... It could be... Um... It could be Spell Tag. Or it could be Expert Belt, something like that. This is to defer determine first, Frank. We don't determine third, we just determine first. There it is. Knockoff gets the crit on the Slow King. Weavile takes a valuable asset with it, but it does come back to this. Sharpedo and Scarf Serena versus Pokemon that can't outspeed, and I think Mega Sharpedo, as long as it doesn't miss Ice Fang, it just finish it from here. He does have the Earthquake to take out the Feraligator, as long as that Feraligator doesn't have priority. I don't think it does. It's, it's DD, very rare to see that. Also interested to see whether or not we're calcing to see if Serena could do enough if we can't kill off the Thunderous. Most likely calcing to see if you can kill the Gligar, though. This is it, though. This, I mean, this comes down to it. Can they take the damage? Mega Sharpedo comes in, feels confident with the Ice Shard. If he misses it, though, it will be even more... <laughs> it would be even closer for the Peach Warriors to still take. It does hit. It does kill off the Gligar. It comes down to a 5% chance. Sky Sharks can hack their way into a Game 3 going with a tie. Does it happen? Does this thing outspeed? The answer is no. Hits it. That's two. For Alligator is left. And there's an Earthquake waiting for him, ladies and gentlemen. It will be... The P2 Warriors going up 2-0 to zero and are looking to get a clean sweep minus that one troll match in this tournament. GG. I said GG. We got there. Did we get there? We didn't get there. Oh no. Computer, no! Ba -da 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 -da. Oh, there we go. Good. Got him. Go me. All I had to do was encourage it a bit. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, you know what? For my girlfriend's birthday, I'm just going to go out and be like, Hey, you want to go to a bar? Yes, to celebrate your birthday. 100%. Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about.
Just kidding. Don't drink your problems away, boys. Embrace them. And hey. What can we say? That's pretty... That's... Mitch just keep control. And again, you know what? It shows right there. That's exactly what you expect from Mitch. Keeps control of his defensive mons. Weakens them up. Doesn't have to bring all these super aggressive pokes. Brings a super defensive, honest to God, godlike defensive core. And just weakens them all for making Sharpedo take it out. There you go. It's cool. And I mean, that's just the way it works. It's... It's really hard to not just keep celebrating the same thing the Pichu Warriors do. And really, you want to celebrate the Sock Power Sky Sharks for what they're doing, and they're trying to gain advantages. It just doesn't feel like, though, they have, they've drafted enough to answer their answers. You know what I mean? Like, you want to, I, th I think that Hitmontop may have to make an appearance here to handle some of the offensive Pokemon. You may have to bring in some different pokes, because I, I really don't think, if that dance is just going to die to set up Stealth Rock, but you have a Mew that you can't kill off hard enough, Maybe maybe hang maybe maybe Mega Houndoom and Hitmontop make an appearance. Those might be decent pokes here to try and manage some stuff. Base 115 speed. Uh doesn't necessarily die unless you hit a jump kick or a high jump kick from Serena. You've got some good pressure down on the slow king. Like extra things to get through these Pokemon that are really giving you problems. Probably the best option. I, I don't think there's any other way at this point. It's the same thing as the Sweet Coons. If you're gonna go face, you might as well go face with the best opportunities. Whether or not Mitch feels comfortable, he's up 2-0. He's not going to try and predict, oh, they're going to bring this in, so I'll bring this. And if he does, he's he's just he's deserving of that type of advantage. But otherwise, what else can we look towards? What else is there? What is left? What is left for the Sky Sharks to do against the Pichu Warriors? Hopefully there's enough to bring it to a series. They can come back from here. It's not over for the Sky Sharks. It is definitely not over for them. This is not just the end of it. This is just, a, it could be potentially the beginning. There's enough seen now from the side of Pichu Warriors to try and work a ray around your, your comp. But if you can't change anything... Hey, you're saying no to Gamma. I'm saying maybe yes. <laughs> At this point. Oh dear. Oh hey, look, there's no battle on. Whoopsie doodle. Maybe I have gone a bit loopy. That's okay. It just makes my uh just makes my things that much more fun. Nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, it is time. Will the P2 Warriors make this a 3-0 cleanup as we see a chestnut switch in? Or have the sock-powered Sky Sharks found their way? They took one advice. They did bring the Houndoom. That Chestnut's not looking too good right now, as it could get roasted. That Houndoom actually has very good dual stab against the the uh, Slow King, the Mew, and the Chestnut, and the Deblade. It's just got a good thing going on here, as the Mega Houndoom will lead. Let's see what he can do with it. This is the champion Fire Red Leaf Green theme. Yes, Nick the File. I only choose the best music. But either way, oh, you actually see a burn? That's it. <laughs> that's toast. Nothing to. Wow, that's actually disgusting. So. Getting the burn on the Sharpedo, I was just, I was looking away casually, only to come back to a Fire Blast burn. Suddenly, Shark King number two has been roasted for dinner, and this is really bad. You have no idea how bad this actually is. This is the only Pokemon that can take on the Houndoom well enough. The, the Slow King can, but it's a lot of damage. There's no guarantee that it kills it off. You can even see, like, a Sunny Day, because we've seen Sunny Day on this Mega Houndoom. You can go for Sunny Day so that the Skull doesn't do as much damage. That's basically toast for the Slow King. Mega Stones, Marie. I was talking about Mega Stones. 
They're the Mega Twinsies. But either way, we do see the Mega Sharpedo come out here. It's not going to be doing anything. It just had to try and put pressure down on that Mega Houndoom. It will have speed if he does want to switch with this. But, yeah, he's in he's in a lot of trouble here. He wants to scout to see what move he's going to be locked into. As you do see, the Scald is being used. Will he preserve this? No, he's just going to let it die. It's been wasted. 10% hacks. It's Pokemon, baby. That's the way it works. That could be the way for Oxum to get this series back out of the three-game gutter. She's looking like she was going to be dumpstered in. Slowking does come in. Knows that it can take all these hits. Put some pressure down. Maybe go for Future Sight or even just go for Scald. Um, funny thing is, I wonder if he's going to try and bait with Future Sight to get the Houndoom in on the Future Sight and then go for Scald when it switches in without the sun up. That would be cool. <laughs> That'd be too cool. But either way, Scald does come through. No burn, no hacks for Mitch. 30% does not mean 100%, ladies and gentlemen. Despite if you play Showdown, you believe otherwise. Thunderbolt does come through. Good damage to know that it is able to live with that much. Ice Beam does kill it off, though. So, Pichuar is getting that small advantage, at least. Not one, there's one less Pokemon to take this Slowking out. But you have a Mega Houndoom and you have a Weavile. You have a Crunch for Alligator. And you've got to regenerate to something like 45, 51%. It's not going to be a lot. Take those super effective moves. So Slow King is left here staring like, Dang, what am I doing, boss? I expect a prediction or Mew to just come out to be the thing that could take the best of both worlds, I guess. I don't know, because this is horrible. This is a horrible spot for the Peach Wars. That burn actually hurts. Sharpie, okay. The chestnut, or chestnut will make it its way in. We'll be hit with a Dark Pulse, so not over-predicting because Oxum knows that she has control over the field. Doesn't need to actually worry about it. Spiky Shield does come up as the Fire Blast is used. Just a little bit of stalling here for the likes of the Pichu Warriors. Not going to get anywhere, but it's just for the sake of using it. Curious if he takes a risk, tries to go for Drain Punch. I don't think so. Oh, it does make the mind game, though. Oh, that's a lot of damage. As he does actually outplay the Sky Sharks. Gets the Drain Punch off. I was kind of thinking maybe there's going to be some kind of overprediction here or just trying to make that type of risky play. Honestly, Chestnut does, ha or Chestnut does have a lot of value against the Sky Sharks. So that kind of play does not bode well if Mitchie can get into the mind of the Sky Sharks and just ruin that. It's pretty good. Now he switches in. Do expect a Double Fire Blast because that's just the way to think when your opponent's playing that type of thing. See now, if I was playing, I know that kind of thing. I go back to Dark Pulse because I know people will do that to me. I know it. But, Mitch gets away with it. Not to toot my own horn, but the horn is pretty big to toot. Nonetheless, Dark Pulse does come through. He is just mind-gaming the crap out of him. But I don't think Sky Sharks actually mind because they can basically just keep getting damage down on everybody. It's pretty important. The question is, how mind-gaming? I bet you he's going to go for another Dark Pulse. He's going for Dark Pulse. He's staying in. He's going for Drain Punch. He's going for Broke. He does have Scarf Serena, so he doesn't actually care at this point. He does go for the Spike Seal to check, and it was Dark Pulse. Oh my god. It's like I'm in Sharking and Oxum's mind too. <laughs> Anyways, another Dark Pulse is coming out as the Fire Blast misses! Oh, God! Ooh! Ooh! From burning the Hyper Carry, 10% chance to a 15% chance miss! Swung right back around. Arguably, again, the Serena is scarfed, outspeeds the Mega Houndoom. Didn't actually... It doesn't matter in the terms of the rest of the team. In terms of this situation, that's pretty bad. <laughs> that's a pretty big deal when, like I said, Chestnut gets tons of value against this team. And it's still standing right now. Knockoff has to come through. Take out the Rocky Helmet. Does get a bit of damage. Leech Seed is going to be used here, as I can just basically read the exact plays that Mitch can make to control this match. Move towards becoming a champion. Fralligator is going to make its way in as spikes are set up. These hazards are coming out. We do know that Defog is on that Gligar, and Chestnut can't really touch it except for going for Leech Seed. He's actually going to go for the Leech Seed right now. Still a Spiky Shield, though. I wonder if we'll see a second Dragon Dance predicting it. And oh, he actually predicts him to predict that, and he goes for Dragon Dance, goes for the Drain Punch, gets the damage off. Mitch is in the mind of a shark right now, and he is hungry for blood. He's, he tastes it. He is going for it. He is, he is just mind gaming so hard right now. <laughs> oh my 
god! This man is a legend. He is reading it so hard. He goes for Spike and Shield right now. It is the safest play because the Sky Sharks basically have to let this thing die. The Spike is up. It's doomed. Oh my god. Oh man. The worst part about that is I was playing along with it. I fell for one of them. But that's just... That's what happens. You have these types of situations where you can just do that. And again, he's completely comfortable. He doesn't care. He knows he has to make these types of plays because if he, if the Frowligator stays in and sets up, it's going to be faster than Serena. It's going to sweep. So his best bet is actually to just attack. It's not about getting the spiky shield damage down. It's about going for damage. That Iskel Crash does nothing. Drain Punch. Oh, never mind. He gets flinched. Doesn't get that Drain Punch off. But it just makes sense for him to stay in and just go for the offense. He can't let that thing set up. He has the Leech Seed on. All he can do is keep healing. So really, after the plus two, you should expect an attack. And he's like, well, I'm just going to do this anyways, because if I lose now, I'm going to lose. And after all that damage, you still have to blade in the back to go for the priority. He's just got so many answers. Those types of greed, those types of gamma plays are just not worth it, in my opinion. And now you're going to see him be able to live this. Actually, we didn't see, did we see a knockoff on this before? I forget what he actually knocked off on it. Sacred Sword does come through. It's not going to get much damage down onto it. But it doesn't matter because HP is being lost, Pokemon are being dropped, and the Warriors are looking to conquer this pro Pokeball. Oh, I'm stupid. You know what? I confused you, Nyctophile. This is, this is Eviolite. The reason being, I'm thinking Assault Vest stops you from using Swords Dance. I just realized what I said two games ago. My apologies. It is it is an Eviolite Dublade. It's the only way to run it. And Sword Dance can be used with Eviolite, not Assault Vest. I got confused with those two items. My bad. See? I pay attention to my stuff. Ha <laughs> ha. We see Hydro Pump coming through. Not enough. We do see the Double Willow, though. Doesn't lose too much for Mitch here. He does actually heal up, which means he can take it. Probably go for, um, for Soft Boiled on the off chance he doesn't die. He doesn't die. Takes less, actually, so he will win out on HP here, which is good. Still doesn't buffer him from a crit. Crit will do about 75%. But... Yeah, Weavell does have to come in. I think he's just going to get up to full here, feeling comfortable. He actually makes the switch to the Slow King. Never mind. Slow King doesn't want to take it. He doesn't make the double switch into this. He will have to take it there. There is the Eviolite. Look, I did it. And, uh, yeah, he could go for this. He's probably just going to go for the Shadow Sneak. Actually, you know what? He goes for the Iron Tail here. No, he doesn't. He actually goes for the Shadow Sneak. Okay. I was going to say on the off chance, maybe for some reason Ox wants to outspeed and not take an Ice, take a Shadow Sneak. I guess that doesn't make much sense. My bad. Mitch makes the correct play, gets more damage down because the Life Orb will bring him down low. He still has four attacks, though, but Serena's untouched, still Scarfed, and you can't touch this with Weavile. The rest of his Pokemon have to take something. It's going to be a Power Whip coming out, and between Gligar's HP and Keldeo's weakness, it's going to have to be Gligar coming out here so they can keep the Scarf on that Keldeo. Instead, it is going to come in. Ooh, makes a U-turn play. Okay, so maybe... Mitch thinking that he wasn't going to do that as, as maybe the Gligar would come in and be able to tank it and just go for Roosts. I could be wrong here. That would have killed if he gone for Power Whip. Actually, I think he could have just won there if he went for Power Whip. But either way, he's going to be able to tank this thing up. There's no damage that can be done for the Keldeo as long as the S Slow King is winning. I'm going to have to give the prize to Slow King. I can't give it to Mitch. This Slow King is just pulling a tortoise in the hair, is winning from just existing. Slow and steady are winning the race, and in this case... He is staying healthy with Regenerator. There is no answer for the Sky Sharks as they are slowly ripped out of the sky. Ladies and gentlemen, prepare your congratulations because it is looking bad for the Sky Sharks. And Pichu Warriors are looking to make this a 3-0 win. It's just looking too clean. There is not enough here. That Ox can try and do. There is not enough Life Orb hits that could kill this. Yes, the Future Sight does nothing because it's a, it's a Ghost or Dark type. But Serena is here. It outspeeds as long as it doesn't miss. He doesn't have to go for the risky hit. He can just go for knockoff if he wants to. He actually ends up going for U-turn again. He knows that this Gligar is going to come in. Slow King can come in. Nothing can be done. This Pokemon is not dying. And then if you switch Weavile in, it takes a Skull. This thing is doomed to die. And U-Turn can be used to kill the Weavile. It is over. There is only so much that the Sky Shark can hope for. <coughs> I honestly think that the Skull is going to be used here. Try and get the burn down. Try and avoid this, this roost from happening. 
But I think this is the song to basically describe, you are against the champion. But this time, it's gonna look like one of my Nuzlocke's ox. It's over. As the Assault Fest will be knocked off, his Scald is used, brought low, get the burn to BM. Just kidding, it didn't happen. But, he's got Chestnut, he can always go back into it. He can even go into Serena at this point. Actually, no, he can't. He has to keep that Scarf on him. Doesn't matter at this point, the Slow King is dead. This, this Sky Snack is dead. And as we see the final moments of the Sky Sharks in the finals, we declare the Pichu Warriors, Coach Mitchy W, in BMing fashion. With Spiky Shield kill. Oh, he didn't even go for the Spiky Shield, really? <laughs> he didn't even go for the Spiky Shield. What a jackass. But he is going for it, ladies and gentlemen. Gets, <laughs> gets the ultimate BM. Mitchy W is your Pro Pokeball Season 4 Champion. GG. A fantastic display of skill from both sides. Almost keeping up to the expectations, not as close as we kind of hoped it for, but something we did expect were the, were the Pichu Warriors to basically draft to their strengths, keep it going, and not let them fall. Your winner. Right her. Congratulations, Mitchie. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we will be getting into the crowning ceremony. Thank you very much for watching. This is your last opportunity to get your new bits in. Once they are closed, we will also be crowning your MVP. Who knows, there could be thousands of bits to outdo the Sock Power Sky Sharks. But nonetheless, what a series, man. What a beautiful series. Be right back, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not the thing. 
By the power vested in me, Mr. Pro Pokenoob running the Pro Pokeball, I present the champion of the Pro Pokeball Season 4. The Championship Cup. Congratulations, Mitchie. You have earned the duck that I painted 10 years ago with my ex-girlfriend. It brings me horrible memories, but hopefully it brings you much better than what I remember with it. God bless you, sir. You have earned this. Not only have you earned this, you've also earned your name. On the Championship Golden Wall. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up to Mr. Mitchie W in chat. Everybody looks forward to the duck. Mitch, you have earned not only your name in the duck to be immortalized forever, no matter what happens with this duck. You have also won yourself a free subscription to my channel. Congratulations, friend. I know you don't show up very much, but enjoy it nonetheless. Stellar Virgo, welcome to the stream. We have just crowned our pro Pokeball champion. At the same time, ladies and gentlemen, we also have to crown our MVP award. Let's get in the final votes here. I don't think there are any more redemptions coming. Oh, there are three more redemptions coming in. Let's score these really quickly. And because chat is a troll, ladies and gentlemen, with a whopping 16,900 Nubit's support, your most valuable Pokemaster will be Oxum of the Sock Powered Sky Sharks. Congratulations, Oxum. You have also won a free subscription, and what better way to celebrate? the last day of the Pro Pokeball Season 4, then with Dagger Drome resubscribing as our first yearly subscriber. God bless you, friend, for your support. Greatly appreciated. You are first to hit a 12 consecutive month resubscription, man. Amazing. I love you too, man. Thank you so much, everyone, for sticking through me. Sticking through me? Sticking with me through all of the technical difficulties tonight. I've tried my best to put on the best show that I possibly can. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Congratulations to Mitch. Congratulations to Oxum. Mitch, you will also have a free Pro Pokeball Champion badge on Discord. If you guys have not seen, we also gave it to everybody else. So, Diego, uh, Scrubbington, uh, Dagger, and Ivan have all received the badge as well. You guys are now part of the Elite Club. Congratulations. Enjoy that. Pro Pokeball Season 5 will be set towards later this year if you guys are interested. Exclamation Pro Pokeball. We'll give you all the information you need to know. This is the official rules that we run. It is a yearly thing. It is super... It, well, it's going to be biannual now because people are really liking it. I hope lots of people sign up for the next one. This thing is super fun. It is my way of giving back to the community. Thank you so much for supporting this and making this the best time we could ever have together as a community because this is what this channel is built around and I'm thankful every single day that we can do events like this. Stay tuned for more information. Our charity event starts June 20th. We will see you then. Enjoy everybody. Have a good night. Mitch, celebrate with some ramen and GBM beer, bro. Peace, everyone. We got there. <laughs>